Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Thrive Co-Living Communities YouTube podcast. I'm Mark Stein, Thrive founder and your podcast host. We're creating sustainable, inclusive, and multi-generational residential communities. Our mission is to combat the epidemic of isolation, revitalize communities, and help others discover the many benefits of engaged community living by offering unique and ecologically sustainable co-living options. In this podcast series, join us as we discuss co-living, in addition to bringing you interesting people from around the world who are doing cool things to expand your knowledge and satisfy your curiosity. Through this podcast, learn more about our concept and see how Thrive Co-Living Communities will bring together people from all walks of life who want to enjoy the best of independent and group living. To find out more about us, please visit our website at thrivecolivingcommunities.org. Thanks for watching and enjoy the podcast. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Thrive Co-Living Communities podcast, broadcasting from Tampa Bay. And I'm pleased to have with me Claudia Nabel. She is a uh, local resident um, in Tampa Bay, and I believe she's the founder, we'll double check this in a moment, of a not-for-profit in Clearwater called Sailability. And uh, actually, uh, my partner and I uh, have participated in it, or her son has, her son Fred, and that's how I met her. And I'm so intrigued about the program and impressed with the program that I asked her to be on the podcast with me. So Claudia, welcome to the Thrive Podcast. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here, Fred, to uh, share what we're doing over in the area. Great. Well, <laughs> first of all, give a give a summary of what you do and fill us in on the history. Where have you come okay. from? Where's the organization come from? Well, it's a funny thing. Um, I come from Brooklyn. I'm a nurse. I've been a nurse for 50 years now, specializing in uh, emergency room. ICU, uh, neurosurgery, uh, orthopedic surgery, and so on and so forth. I relocated down to the Tampa Bay area back in 93 and uh, started in 96, started doing some volunteer work down in St. Petersburg, Florida, where I, I asked if they needed a nurse. Basically, down there, they were running clinics to train our Paralympians in sailing, and they'd hold clinics and stuff like that down there, down at the St. Pete uh, Sailing Center. And then, uh, so that was from 96 till around 2000 and whatever, still worked full time and uh, really liked doing this volunteering. Uh, where I come from in Brooklyn, we didn't have the luxury of sailing. I usually say that, you know, our specialty was dodging bullets where I grew up, but it was a nice place to live, you know. Anyway. Wound up down here in St. Pete, uh, sort of as a fluke volunteering. A friend of mine, her husband, had a physical disability, a uh, spinal cord injury, and he was volunteering down in St. Pete. And uh, I said, well, if they need a nurse, I'd love to come. And I met the most unbelievable people down there, uh, the physical, physically challenged individuals. But it was an eye-opener for me. And then, um, so we did that some years. And then back in 2000. Uh, one of the founders. I'm one of the founders of Sailability Greater Tampa Bay. We are the, uh, and I'll get into what Sailability is. Just keep me off my tangents, and I'll just go forward. But just giving a little mm -hmm. bit of a history. Right. Long and short was that um, we you know, the we decided that we weren't about racing. I mean, with the Paralympics and all of that, it was about racing. And you know, we and one of the other founders, Alder. Uh, she was taking a sail from St. Pete up to um, Maine, I guess it was, in a 12-foot bower dinghy by herself to raise awareness with, for people with disabilities. That's what they said at that time. And she, so she got about from, and the organization that was sponsoring her um, basically uh, was supposed to be setting up dates of speaking dates for her, where she's going to be staying, so on and so forth. And uh, 
they didn't do any of the above, really. So while she was sailing this little 12-foot sailboat, and back in, this was in 2000, uh, she it was having to make arrangements while she was sailing. She made it as long and short as she made it as far as, I think it was Moorhead, North Carolina or South Carolina. And uh, she, she felt like a failure because she it was just brutal, you know, being on her own and now Because now... To get across from here, from the Gulf, so, so from St. Pete, she sailed down to the Keys. The Keys, she was supposed to go through the locks, but the boat was too darn small to do that. So they lifted it up and put it on the back of a, a truck and drove her across. And then she got into the water. And uh, basically, when she got up to where she was, she made a couple stops, but that's where she was, like, brutal. She came back, and we decided, well, why can't we start our own? you know, organization. And, uh, you know, we could focus on people just having fun on the water and enjoying and learning how to sail. And if they want to race, we could refer them over to that other organization. And so back in 2000, we had hooked up with another organization called, it was Share, uh, down out of, um, oh gosh, Fort Myers. And they spoke with their board and asked if we could join and be in a satellite under their umbrella. And the answer was yes. And then as we were getting ready to do that, another organization um, uh, called Sailability, believe it or not, it's a it's an, an international organization, asked if we would be the first program in the United States to do sailability. And so we said, OK. And so basically, sailability uh, in our area, our mission statement is that we're here to provide affordable, accessible sailing activities and education to children and adults of all abilities, focusing on community integration to improve the quality of life for all involved. What's that mean? You go with the flow, <laughs> you serve whoever you're going to be able to, you know, that wants to see and experience this. And that's basically the beginning, you know, of uh, what we did. It was probably about a group of, I'd say about 10 of us. And um, I'm the last girl standing, I guess you'd say. So we've been, you know, we were born uh, in 2001 as Sailability US. And then it was really weird that, you know, I didn't understand why we'd have to pay for someone's salary when we're the one doing all the work. So in 2002, we became Sailability Greater Tampa Bay. And so everything was for us and not having to share any things. Cause, and the thing is, we needed boats. So what did we do? You know, Alder had just come back from the from Australia uh, over in uh, with the Paralympics over there. They had the Olympics there in 2020, uh, no, to 2000. And so what do we know about how do we start our own organization? So there's an organization called Shake a Leg on the East Coast, started by Harry Horgan. And uh, Alder knew him. And I said, well, why don't you ask Harry what, you know, what he did? You know, how do we get this thing started? I mean, she, Alder was a, a, a counselor at hospice, you know, mental health counselor, and I'm a nurse. And so we know about that stuff, but nothing about this. And Alder, you know, knew about racing and stuff like that and boating and what have you. So anyways, um, when she called Harry up, he said, well, I had about $5,000 seed money. And well, you know, this was not going to be happening with us. We didn't have two nickels to rub together. So we started thinking, well, I, I, I said to Alder, well, what about if you call up Chris? Because we wanted boats also that were non-capsizable, safe. You know, we wanted it to be an enjoyable experience. So um, she called, she got in touch with Chris Mitchell, who's the boat designer over in uh, in Australia for this Hansa, the Hansa class boats, which you and Fred and Isabella have seen in the like loads of fun. And so we figured out, okay, well, I said, well, Alder wanted to ask Chris if he could send us a few boats from there by the time they build them and send them over and we'll figure out how to get the money. That's how stupid, you know, it's like, you know, you, I'm, I'm in another world, right? By the time the boats arrived here in the port of Tampa, it was a few months later, you know, Alder, you know, she does this Toastmaster stuff. So she was speaking to organizations, nonprofits. And by the by the time those boats arrived, we we had the money for three of them. So we ordered three more. <laughs> like I said, we're we were not to, you know, we've got this vision in our head, right? Uh needless to say, so that was in 2001 about. 
Uh, then they got in touch with us from Australia and asked if we would hold an international access dinghy regatta, which is the name of that particular Hansa boat. So we said, sure, you know, how do you do a regatta, you know, type of stuff. But, you know, the powers that be over oversee, you know, God takes care of drunks and fools, right? So I guess we fit the fool category. And um, so we said, okay, we'll make this regatta. And it was going to be an international regatta where people came from all over the world. Now, mind you, sailability, there's about a, a hundred sailability organizations around the world. We had no idea. <laughs> But, you know, they, they geared towards, you know, working with people with able-bodied, disabled, whatever, whatever words you want to use to be politically correct, you know. And um, anyways, so we did the regatta. But guess what it was? The regatta was held in October of 2001. And 9-11 happened in September. Do you know that regatta still went on? And uh, we had a, a young lady that she was from, her name was Nava. I can't remember her last name, but uh, she was a ventilator dependent quadriplegic that uh, basically went on the radio station and said, I would like to go to America to participate in this uh, access dinghy regatta. And at the time, this is what she was saying, the radio station of the people where in the town she came from uh, basically raised over $10,000 to get her, her dad, and her caregiver over here. Is that amazing or what? Wow. And so she was unable to bring her own boat, but she was able to bring her own sails with her. So uh, basically, we had to, her sails were pink. You know, this, this is the colors, as you know, are very bright colors on these boats. And she borrowed the, the boat part, the hull, from Shake a Leg in Miami. And then we had uh, people coming from, uh, I'll never forget, it was our Paralympic team. You know, Alder had known some of these folks that came down from Canada and they got to play in the dinghies and they tried capsizing it in a wooden capsize, you know. So I guess we got some decent boats and stuff like that. And then the regatta was just amazing. It was like a whole weekend and we had so there was Canada, there was Australia. Uh, I I can't remember because I know Ireland signed up. There was the U.S. A bunch of our you know uh, peers around from all over you know Florida, like Shake a Leg. We had a whole contingency from that from there too, and um, we just had a blast. And um, and that was at the Clearwater Community Sailing Center where we are you know still to this day. And then so that's like just a, li a little thing you know about what went on um we also i think in 2003 held another one because they asked us to do it and you know we're just dumber than dumb sure we'll do it you know <laughs> people had a blast and then uh you know going off because like basically sailing you know if i have to go speak about sailing you know or what i do what our program is about it's sort of hard i mean it's in the sense that sailing is really about life okay in sailing, you can't sail directly into the wind. You got a zigzag intact, just like life is. Just like life, you have to adapt to things and figure it out on the fly. And so, like I said, I never sailed before we came down here and started the program. So I sort of had to learn how to do that stuff, too. And um, we've had, a, yeah, I, I could go on and on. So you get me back on track of what, what am I up to right now, next, you know? Um, you let me know. Uh, that was the beginning, you know, since no, the beginning. That, yeah, go ahead. No, that was awesome. It's a great story. Uh -huh. um, talk a little about, tell us some stories, names withheld, of course, or, or yeah. identifying yeah. Uh, uh, things withheld. Talk to us about some of the moments that you experience doing this. Well, with there's the kids, kids with and the, adults. Well, kids I could say, stories. let me start with the aha moment for me and then sort of relate to where it is with them. Because when I learned how to sail and, you know, people would say to me, you see the wind? No. Well, it's right there. No. <laughs> and you try and figure this stuff out or, you know, it's like early on, like, Let's say when we were working with Special Olympics, you know, one of the things are depending on 
uh, where they are developmentally, you know, uh, and all of that. It's like a lot of people have to learn by see, feel, touch type of stuff. So sometimes in training and everything also, I guess, being a nurse and everything, you got to teach people at their level of understanding, right? Mm -hmm. So what we did, an example with Special Olympics, like go back in around 2003 to 2004, probably around three or four, we had the opportunity, you know, of uh, working with Special Olympics of Pinellas County, okay? We were the first program to actually do Special Olympics in sailing. So, which was, you know, so interesting, right? And so how do you teach the kids? Because they're like various levels too, you know? So the sailing center being housed over there, I mean, it was a wonderful thing because we could use their boats. I mean, we pay for our um, uh, corporate contracts. So, and you see like our boats and everything over there. But for Special Olympics, most of these kids, and I say kids, they could range in age from like, I think probably eight, 10 years old to like 50, 50 years old. You know what I mean? But they're, they're agile. And so what they did was when we did our Special Olympic training, the sailing center let us do it on the waves so we could have two people it's a catamaran you know when it's just one sail and everything like that so like part of the exercises in in learning them you know teaching them is we're going to make believe that we're you know have our arms out and everybody walk around in the yard i want you to make believe try to catch the wind with your arms and so they'd see now if you turn this way where's the wind coming from and that so they actually you actually became one with the wind, one with the boat and everything like that. And when they caught on, it was like the faces lit up and everything. I know, you know, it's a, it's a gradual experience, you know what I mean? But um, it was kind of neat just seeing the happiness. Now, we had one athlete, um, Chuck, and uh, the thing is, is he would be, it was, it was amazing because the empowerment that like a lot of these kids, you know, got from it. So one of the fellas name is Peter and uh, his parents lived on a boat when he was a young, you know, young boy, they would go out and lived on a sailboat and sailed all around and stuff and blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, and some of these kids didn't have the experience. Some of them, they were like scared to get on there. So you just let them sit on the boat, touch the boat, whatever. As you sort of progress in the process, uh, Peter was on one of the catamarans with uh, oh, Chuck. And Chuck never talked, totally nonverbal. And um, so one day, so, but the, you know how boats rock and it's just so relaxing and everything like that. And so Chuck was leaning on the mast of the boat, facing the back, the stern of the boat. And Peter was skipper and driving. And of course, we had, you know, one of the certified uh, sailor with them. And Chuck, I guess, sort of fell asleep. <laughs> and then they hit a wave. And over uh, Chuck went into the water. Peter just naturally did a man overboard maneuver. And then we just pulled, Chuck got pulled back in the boat and resumed his seat over <laughs> at the mast over there. And their trip coming back when they came back, I saved Peter. I saved Chuck, you know, it's like we did a man overboard. So all of the stuff that we were teaching, however, I mean, actually just came to be. And uh, they just sailed forever. Then it came to the point where Chuck uh, would just it was really weird. He wouldn't like look forward, but he'd face the backwards and then just drive the boat without even looking just by based on feel of wind and everything like that and the crew that was on there. And I was always amazed because he did so much better driving backwards than he did forwards. And then forward, years later, I joined this women's group, Windlasses, where we do, um, you have to race there. And my my big butt is in this little kid's boat, like these little prams. And um, you get all cramped up being a woman my size. <laughs> anyway, they're boats for kids. And so one day I was like going back and all of a sudden I found myself driving backwards, just like Chuck did. And I did much better driving backwards and I just like cracked up. So, you know, that's a that's, you know, one of funny story and stuff like that. But the confidence, I mean, from when Peter saved Chuck from drowning or from going overboard, 
his whole demeanor about how he walked and carried himself, it was almost like a rooster just showing his feathers and stuff like that. And the confidence was unbelievable, uh, just unbelievable, you know. Mm. That's just one of the stories. Then Some of, uh, some and, of the yeah. lower functioning people probably still display signs of their pleasure and awe. Yeah. Uh, are you able to talk a little bit about that, some examples of that? Um, probably well, just having the wind and the the spray on well, their face. You know what's an interesting thing that you're saying that I'm just thinking about experiences there. So for a while there, you know, we have our community sales once a month and the Special Olympics, you know, like when we were working with them, uh, they uh, we, we'd we have them another day, you know, different days, probably during the week to coincide with their schedule. Eventually, what happened was um, the funding, of course, went away. And, you know, a lot of people couldn't afford it. So we we're we're not good business people, you know what I mean. So if they wanted a sale, they came down and sailed. They got scholarship, and we just figured whichever way we'll we'll keep the program going, you know, and all of that. Um, but when you were asking about like them, I I lost. I'm a senior. I lost my train. <laughs> yeah, this is like crazy. But um, it was about. I'll remind you. Um, yeah. It was about seeing their faces, um, experiencing being out on the water. and Oh, having... no, that's it. And then it's about, or it's out on the water. There was, a, in one of our community sales, there were twin sisters, okay? One of them was normal, and the other twin was born severely um, developmentally, mentally disabled, nonverbal, and... Uh, so what would happen is, so we tried to have both of them. If there's like family people, but had one in one group, you know, like in one boat with a certified sailor and one in the other. And we try to keep up with each other. Well, I'll tell you what. There was dolphin out because, you know, we see him occasionally. The boat that had the disabled child, you know, mentally challenged child, rather. The dolphin jumped out of the water and just. Plop! You know, you know how they do that show behind motorboats. And I'm like, I was like, I had the, the kid, you know, the the the, the norm, normal whatever sister. But, you know, like when I'm out there in the boats with the kids, you know, we'll say, call a dolphin, call a flipper, you know, bang on the boat because they like the sound. And I'm going, I was like in shock. And I said to the, to the little girl, do you believe that? I said, do you, do you believe that that just happened? I've never seen that before. She And she looked at me and she goes, <laughs> well, Claudia, that's of course I know how to talk to dolphins. And she was like, eh, you know, like making the sounds and stuff. It was just amazing. But there's, there's ways of communicating, uh, you know, with other stuff. Some of the kids, uh, you know, that are nonverbal. When we when we had a lot of Special Olympic uh, kids, this guy, John, he wouldn't talk. You know, they're just nonverbal. And we were out sailing and uh, he just started talking to me. And I'm like, oh, my God. You know, meanwhile, they've been sailing with you for like how many months, you know, with our events and stuff. And then some of them might just start singing, you know. And uh, so basically it was able to. I'm sorry. I got to let this thing go. Sorry. I hope I don't see you up here. Let me just get rid of this here. Hold on. Sorry. Um. Anyway, so. There, there's just like so many things that you see happen, how, how they evolve. Some of them, you know, when they're in the boats, too. And this is with adults, too. It's like, OK, where's the wooden coming from? Where's this? What do you see here? You know, or, or reading the water. Where is the wind on there based on how flat or glassy this stuff is? And then also realizing it's like you're saying it's really What's the challenges? The challenges is really between, like with me, with myself, not with other stuff. You know, safety, very important. And they'll be looking, you know, looking out to see stuff. But um, it it just amazes me. Uh, it, you know, we we had a, one regatta. Um, it was, gosh, I think it was in 04 or something. And again, people came from all over the state. and. Uh, or whoever was around 
And uh, one one of the nurses that I work with, her son actually video videotaped it, and it was just the just phenomenal job that they did on it. We actually put that on YouTube. I don't know how I did it, but it went on there. You know what I mean? <laughs> but so uh, you, you have yeah. volunteers. Yeah, uh, a good uh, committed group of volunteers. Talk a little bit about them. Okay, and how they're involved and what you think draws them week after week. Okay. Uh, warm and fuzzies draw them. First of all, our organization, we're uh, an all-volunteer organization. Okay. So, um, and like the uh, before I divert and then you bring me back, like this, this Saturday is the first time we're actually making a fundraiser all by ourselves. So that's going to be, I mean, people are so gracious, really. So all of the years, of like, we've, I've, I've been writing grants, you know, I'm not, like I said, I'm a nurse. I'm not a grant writer. So basically, we have no paid employees, however, um, whatever we have. And I can go over a little of the stuff that we do have, and I'll talk on the volunteers first and everything like that, is either been by donations, grant writing, or what have you. Like I said, we've been around since... Uh, to 2001 officially okay um and i took a grant writing class at saint pete college one time and uh, we sort of i winged it from from there you know so basically uh what what draws all right so we're all volunteer some of the volunteers that we have are if it wouldn't have been for a local group of ladies called the windlasses they started volunteering with us God, I would say probably over 10 years ago or more. OK, and it's a group of women. They have their own little history, too, but uh, they they love sailing. They like to race, compete and all of that. And you know how like people's pads cross and everything Our pads crossed. And they were the most unbelievable uh, people that you would ever want to meet. And they, you know, would take, you know, a lot of our people, whether it's the veterans whether it's seniors, whether it's people less, with hospice page people that we've taken out sailing, whatever it is, it's like I think being a volunteer, at least for me, and I, I could probably vouch for the rest of the people, I think you get more out of volunteering than than uh, you know that they're, they're like thank you. It's like no thank you. The energy is just unbelievable, you know, just unbelievable, and so. The windlasses have been with us, like I said, at least over 10 years or more now. You know, maybe one, a couple started and then a couple more. And, blah, blah. and then um, they said to me, Claudia, why don't you come join the windlasses? I said, well, you know, I'm not really a kind of competitive person. You know what I mean? But how could I say no to people that basically helped us survive for this long? You know, because things ebb and flow, really. I mean, the Special Olympics went away, so... That's okay, but they could still come. As long as they wanted to sail, we had a spot for them in the boat, you know. So the windlasses have been mm -hmm. totally instrumental. Uh, then people, you know, hear about you or they see stuff because you. I don't, we don't pay attention to what it is that we're doing, you know what I mean? And I, like I said, I think that those that volunteer get a lot more out of it than people realize you know, for doing something, especially, you know, this world being as crazy as it is right now. We live in our own little bubble right now of happiness. And um, so we've had people like the Rotary Club of, you know, Dunedin, the Kiwanis Club, the Sertoma Club, you know, uh, the re recent, I mean, the Dunedin Boat Club, you know, St. Pete Yacht Club, all of it, it takes a community, you know, and for for a while there, there, there was a, we used to give out this thing in the beginning when we were new. It was called the Stone Soup Award. I don't know if there's, there's a there's a book called Stone Soup. Okay, and basically what it is in a nutshell is that um, these people uh, in a town. Okay, these soldiers were coming to town, and the the town's people were like, oh no, the soldiers are coming. The soldiers, we got to hide all our food. We got to do this because back at the time of war. They really take over stuff. So um, the story goes that uh, when the soldiers got into town, everything was like hidden and everything. And soldiers said to the townspeople, boy, sure would be nice to have some stone soup. And the 
soldiers, so the townspeople, well, what stone soup? Have you never had stone soup? Well, you need to start with three stones. So someone ran off and got the stones. Oh, that, and a big kettle, a pot, of water. Let's do, you know, they, they got that and throw their stones in there. So they did that. Boy, and it would really be good if we had some spices and maybe some celery and this and that in the pot. And, oh, I can get some of that. So they ran back to their house and got it. And then, and it would be really tasty if we had some meat. They did that. And then it's like, ooh, the stone soup smells like it's done. Maybe, and they had a party where the village people, this one got bread, this, that, the other. And then the soldiers basically, you know, were tired. And so then the townspeople is, well, why don't you come stay here? I have a place in my barn. And so it goes. Long and short, I mean, everybody was happy. They had a great time. There was dancing and great food, stone soup, you know. And uh, so that's basically what saleability is about. <laughs> it's the community, if you think, that's doing all of this stuff. And we, we haven't given away the award, but I did win it one year, and I was just so tickled by getting that, that award. It meant more to, than anything, you know. Um, with some of the other stuff, I mean, for a while there, you know, it's like life. You just go and go wherever it takes you. With people that have special needs, you got to adapt to what it is. I mean, like right now we have uh, the, well, I didn't tell you about the fundraiser yet, did I? No, That's no. this Saturday. Let's yep. see. I, I remember to go back. So the fundraiser is this Saturday, September 21st. And um, basically over the, we've only been doing it maybe seven years or six years thereabouts and all of that, but we did it jointly with the sailing center. And then something came up, and then this year the sailing center said, "No, we're you know we're not going to be holding that one over here. You can do you know do it on your own or whatever. This way you get all the proceeds. Because in the past we used to split whatever you know whatever we took in, whatever we um, netted. So this was a really nerve wracking thing, having you know never done something like this before. But again, our Stone Soup Award stepped in and. People, this one says, well, I know how to organize that. And this one says, well, I can do that. And, I, and so right now we're in the process of having our very first solo star sales and cocktails fundraiser. And it's and instead of at the sailing center, uh, you know, because it's like, how do we do something like this? It's like, you know, because there was for the room alone, it was going to cost us twenty two hundred dollars just for the room. That didn't include the people that would be doing the catering, the people that would be doing the um, alcohol, you know, and stuff like that, the musicians. And, you know, I'm thinking, oh, my God, it's going to be a fortune to put this on. So something said, go over and speak with Sherry over at Island Way, because, you know, Island Way Grill over there in, in Clearwater, because over the years, They've been just amazing. You know, the Baystar Restaurant Group has been anything, whatever. What is it? What is it that you need? Well, you know, we wanted to do this. And, you know, it was like Frank, who owns all these places, is like, I don't like asking for stuff because everybody's always asking him, you know. So I texted Sherry and I said, Sherry, um, I, I can, can we, I need to meet you. I need you, I need your guidance on some things, you know, cause she, she plans all of these other big events around Clearwater and stuff like the, you know, the seafood wine and thing and this and that. So I told her what we wanted to do. And, uh, the first time that we had the pirate camp, which I'll remind me about the pirate camp too. Okay. And, um, uh, because that, that, that'll be a really interesting thing. But the first time we had the pirate camp, uh, the, it was held at Island Way Grill on their outside patio. So I and it was just and now this year we're I think we're into our thirteenth or fourteenth pirate camp year. But I'll fill you in on that. You know what I mean? And um, so anyway, what happened was I I said Sherry, you know we oh I just we're getting dark on here. Let me see. You gotta you know help us do this thing. Uh, and so. She said, well, we could do it over there. How many people you think you're going to have? So I said, well, probably um, I figured like half than what the uh, sailing center had. So I said, well, maybe about 70 to 100 people. And she said, OK. And the place could 
definitely handle that amount of people. I'm not, I'm trying not to lose you here, but there's something going wrong on the settings. One second, okay? No, um, you're, you're good. I'm good. You can see my color, Chris. It looks really dark here. Uh oh, no. did I lose you? No. No, you're it's good. good. Yeah, All right. Good. I'll just play it by ear then. So, anyways, what we did was we were going to have the fundraiser out on the side patio and figure they did a phenomenal, phenomenal rate for us. I couldn't believe it. I wanted to cry. You know what I mean? And um, so, as it is right now, as of I think yesterday or so, we were up to 108 people. So now instead of having it on the outside, you know, myself and Susie, we just went to see Sherry today. We're actually going to have it on the inside. Um, you can still see me, right? I should stop uh, futzing around with this thing here. Yeah, so um, if it's fine. Okay. So, so we got the inside room and we're probably anticipating that room could hold about 180 people. And um, so basically the proceeds that we get from that, and then we've got, um, so that'll all go to buy, you know, more stuff. I mean, and I'll, I'll just let you know a little bit about course and stuff. But um, so we we have, a, let's see, we have a fishing charter that was donated from a Walt over here in um, Hog Island Fish Camp. So you go out on his boats, he's got this charter boat, and whatever fish you catch, he brings you back and hooks it over in Old Bay Cafe restaurant. He also donated us a, um, uh, it was like the fishing charter. Oh, oh, happy hour for 10 people over at Hog Island. And then, okay. And then, you know, sponsorship financially, then the Dunedin, um, what do you call it? The Dunedin uh, Community Sailing Foundation. Okay. All right. So you were, uh, these are people that have been contributing to the event coming up this Saturday, right. uh, September 21st. Right, 2024. 2024, yeah, at five o'clock, Island Way Grill. And, uh, you know, we have the bigger room over there. There's going to be, so what's going on over there is we have um, a live auction, which I believe we have about five or so items to bid on. Um, you know, one of them is a sailboat ride. One of our volunteers has a 41 foot sailboat. So he's going to be taking a you know, group of people out over there. That's going to be out of Apollo Beach. Then we have our sailability pontoon boot boat, which is uh, wheelchair accessible. And we're going to just do like a little ride. You could bid, bid on a ride going up and down the intercoastals with I'm just figuring probably about six or so people, if they want to bid on that, you know, give some refreshments and then they could just get to see the water. And uh, some somebody donated a beautiful like golf club, like one putter and one other thing. We're not sure which is going in the live auction or the raffle auction. And then um, I think we're working on another sailboat ride and some other something else over there. So that's live auction. And then um, the, then we're going to have a thing called a bucket of cheer, which basically we're going to sell raffle tickets for like a buck a piece or something and put the prizes that goes with that behind it. So you could go and put in tickets wherever you think you want to win. And there's some nice items there. We have um, some artwork that was done. One of them was done by uh, one of the people that sails with us. She's a disabled vet that had been pretty, pretty sick. And she does. In fact, I'm going to hold up this picture. This is one of them that, uh, well, she's going to have. You see, it's all you can't really appreciate it. But the art is called pointillism. And it's every one dot at a time. And she does all of this stuff. And she's in three galleries now down in St. Pete. So she donated one of her works there. Then um, I don't know if you're familiar with Brad Kendall, but uh, he is our Paralympic medalist, silver medalist. His team uh, drove the uh, sonar boats at the 2016 Olympics slash Paralympics in Brazil. And his mom started painting again. So she's going to donate one of her paintings. And he's actually donating um sailing lessons by him like a couple hours on one of the boats on at the sailing center for up to maybe five people or something that he's going to take him out sailing and those are just some of the things and then we have a slew of other you know baskets like not on main don't every every year uh karen donates like uh 
gorgeous basket, you know, with liquor and stuff that's coastal type of design. So that's up for for uh, something there. And then the um, uh, Derek Teal Foundation, they donate two baskets that they, they're going to be auctioning off. And then just like a, we have probably over 30 different prizes to either bid on, raffle on or what have you. So and the food is going to be amazing. It's going to be heavy hors d'oeuvres. Over at Islandway Grill, if people haven't been there, I mean, it's just an awesome place. And since it's between, oops, I lost you here, between 5 o'clock and 7.30, the view we have in that room is that we're going to see the sunset over there. So, like, what better place? And they're going to have, like, uh, beef sliders and mahi uh, sliders and uh, phenomenal fruit cocktail and a charcuterie board and, and um to the, the, there's you're not gonna they're not gonna run out of food you know what I mean um it's just you will go away from hors d'oeuvres like totally stuffed and the desserts are just to die for so and then you know the ticket you know if you buy a ticket it comes with either two you know two, two wine two beer or two uh what do you call it two um what do they call those kind of drinks where they design for you like one's going to be a Moscow mule and the other one's going to be a dark and stormy sailor drink, you know. And if people want other than what we're offering, they can they could buy it. You know what I mean? And so then there's going to be. Where yeah. do people sign up uh, for? They the could. OK, project. so they could go to our website, sailabilitytampabay.org, and then they'll see on the website it says star sales and cocktails. And you could just click on it. You know what I mean? And um so they could get in that way or they could go to a Facebook page, Sailability Greater Tampa Bay, and they have that little whatever code that that you just click on over there. Or they could actually buy tickets at the door if they want to just show up at five o'clock. And right. uh, yeah, so it'll be it'll be really fun. And it's and there's a little, you know, just two piece band so that people could talk. You know, you don't have to talk over them. It'll be nice just to match that. So that's, you know, that's that's what we're doing to move forward with what we're doing. And just so people know, like I said, you know, we're all volunteer, but, uh, you know, like our biggest. Uh, and so, you know, based on donations, blah, 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 grants and, you know, nice people. And, you know, if it like when we have our community sales or events, if you could afford it, fine. If you can't afford it, that's fine, too. I mean, you know, we've served. Sort of, kids over in Tampa, they, it's a children's home, which is all kids in foster care and stuff like that. So we we don't, how could you charge somebody for that? I mean, for them to come out again, when you're seeing what is it, how does it, you know, affect these kids and stuff that they're, they're afraid to get water, you know, get wet, you know, and then all of a sudden, well, I'm not going to go sailing, but I'll go on the other boat. And then when they see their friends sailing, then they want to go do the other boat too, you know, go sailing. So, you know, it's all at their own pace or enjoyment and stuff like that. Uh, like I said, the veterans that we have, we, you know, for years back, we were uh, one of the, the VA, the Tampa VA, Haley VA, uh, was the, uh, let me see, Gulf uh, War Multi-Trauma Receiving Center from, you know, the our, our vets that were coming back and active military as well. So, you know, sometimes we'll just bring them out. And in fact, one year, it was interesting, it was back in 2004 or thereabouts there was a guy his name is lynn lynn moyers and he he was um a vet he was a he was a ventilator dependent quadriplegic never sailed or anything like that freak accident happened he was engaged to get married and he was cutting down i guess a tree or something like that and it fell the wrong way and as he was running to get out of the way he fell and broke his neck and so the the his uh fiance at the time still married him you know she had had some bunch of kids of her own and um, they took care of him, you know, and they were married for that time. And then she went, but they got this. Uh, so she needed need to learn how to operate a ventilator, you know, at home and everything like that. And so they got one of these craftsman uh, tool chests or whatever. She kept all his ventilator equipment in there and they traveled around the country. They pulled a little trailer that pulled that and he got to do stuff. And then so what happened was... Um, Alder was with us at the time, so it had to be around 2004. And she went to the VA every day, you know, well, whatever. They set up a, for them to train him on how to sail. He, because of, what happened was after his wife couldn't take care of him, he was living in the spinal cord unit at the VA hospital. And uh, so she said, you want to sail? And he never sailed before. He said, sure. 
So she trained him on land. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, the, this or that. And the boat we had, which we have to repair it and get money to repair that. But it's an electric boat. So, like, because he can't move, he would sail it with his chin. So there was like a little joystick. And if he'd want to let the sails out, he'd push it out. Pull the sails in, he'd go like that. If he wanted to go to the right, he'd turn to push this ball to the right and left that way there. But right now, you know, that's not number one priority, but we need to fix that because in case, and there's a ventilator compartment in the back. So, uh, you know, we use it, but that boat could only have one person on there. So we have to have a support boat, you know, running pretty close to it just in case the ventilator stops working. But <laughs> it was amazing having him out. Uh, you know, the first time like we did, there was no newspapers or anyone there to see it. And then the next time we were in a, you know, chase boat over there and uh, his, his his staff, you know, that goes with him from the VA hospital. They were in the power boat with us. And he's over there just zip zipping through there. And they said, uh, how does it feel? And he goes, I'm free. And so till he passed, like he passed about a year or so later. But every quarter or so, they'd come out. We'd make a day for him to get out there sailing and stuff like that. But it was amazing. You know, and how you adapt stuff for it. Like, if he can't move his head, how does he know which way the boat's turning? So we put, like, a visual thing in so he could see, like, as he was driving, we had this little, like, antenna. So he could see which direction he was going because he couldn't, you know, see that other stuff. But it was amazing, you know, just amazing. But wow. anyway, that. That's a little bit of it in a nutshell. <laughs> thank you, you know. so much for sharing. Um, thank you. And, and thanks for, for what you're doing. It's, Yo, it's, it's really inspiring. No, um, it's, well, yeah. People need to see, they need to be able to pay it forward. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, uh, with me, you know, it's sort of like what works for you. You know, like when they come and sail with us, it's like, okay, we're going to do stuff with you. But you need to let us know because you're part of this this game here. It's not about us. You know, everybody's different. So you need to let us know what you think will work for you. And we'll figure out how to make it happen. You know, so it's not. Um, a, yeah, it's us, not. A, yeah. Give us the website again. Best email address. Uh, a phone number if you have a phone number associated with the organization. Yeah. I, OK, so the the website is sailabilitytampabay.org or originally it was sailabilitygreatertampabay.org okay um the email would be sailability s a i l a b i l i t y g t b at gmail.com and then the phone number if anyone needs to reach me we had a phone but you know it's so hard to answer it and all of that i could give you my own number which is 727-686-7031. And my name is Claudia. Okay. And, and do you, do you yeah. have room for volunteers? If somebody wants to we, volunteer? We always, you know, that's funny you ask. We always have volunteers, always need volunteers. Um, basically, what we've been doing is one of, one of our volunteers, actually, she was a teacher, and she set up like, well, you've seen the new way, the new system. You go here to get this, there to sign in, this, da, da, da. So um, what we do with our volunteers, because some people don't want to sail, or some people like greeting people, or some people are shy and they don't know what they're doing, or, you know, some people want to rig boats. So what we've been doing, which seems to work out pretty nicely, is just come on and see what we're doing. And, uh, you know, you ask questions, and the people are just so friendly and everything like that. And you might want to let us know what you might want to do. You know, just observe, and don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. And, you know, the other thing is we try to do is we always try to rig an extra boat so that if our volunteers, you would like them to see what it's like to get in there and uh, go sailing, too. So we're really, really, really flexible. And, and uh, if, you, yeah. if you have a person who has a disability of any uh -huh. sort, um, right. just bring them out or uh, you, you, have your date, you have Let your dates on the website. Try again. There we go. Nope. You went away for some reason. Yeah, just huh. and I'm not. Are you there? There we go. Mark? So, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, now you are. <laughs> so yeah. if you if you have someone or you are uh, have a disability, uh -huh. uh, 
then uh, do you have the dates that you sell on the website? Yes. So what we we've, we've done is and we, the, the the dates for this year are coming up right now. But every January we we repost stuff. But usually we try to get one community sale in usually at the beginning of the month, and we try to do it every other week. But it doesn't necessarily happen, you know, because the sailing center has stuff going on too. And then we t- we try to do also one special event. So we have a day open for special event with some of our groups like wheelchairs for kids. All these kids are in wheelchairs and they like doing extreme stuff. So they come out a couple times. We The children's home comes out a couple times. The veterans, uh, we, we right now we're, uh, we have a connection to Park over here in, um, in Pinellas County. So hopefully we'll get them to, you know, to do some things too. And, uh, you know, just as it comes. So if, if people are interested, let them just give us a holler, you know, either email us or give us a call. But email's probably better because Susie, Susie's the real organized one in our group and she'll coordinate, you know, the dates and stuff like that and be able to answer questions. I'd answer questions too, but I talk too much. So, you know, we need to <laughs> have people that could sort of rein me in. Well, you are you are the perfect person to do this podcast. And oh, well, I thank really you. want to thank you for doing it. And and thank you for the energy that you put into the world. For thank the, you. And thank you. Well, I can't have the energy unless I'm getting the energy. You know what I'm saying? And I get the right. energy from doing what I'm doing. So it's a win win all around. So, so we just need to get other people out there and to see that it really isn't about sailing. It's about doing something that you never thought you could do. Of course, right. you can, Empowered. you know, and whatever. It's it's very empowering. Whatever you put your mind to, and then you have the support of each other to be able right. to make it happen. There's no such thing as I can't, right? Absolutely. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, please reach yes. out to Cla- Claudia at Sailability. And uh, if you like the podcast, please uh, click the like button or the thumbs up subscribe, click the notification bell, and we're here uh, about every week. So please tune in to others, other podcasts. Uh, If you want to learn more about our organization, uh, we're at thrivecolivingcommunities.org. And we support people doing cool things just like Claudia. So (laughs) thanks, everybody. And we'll, we'll see you next time. And at the Thrive Co-Living Communities podcast. Thanks for joining us for another great episode of the Thrive Co-Living Communities YouTube podcast. To learn more about our mission and how you can support our vision of creating co-living communities worldwide, please visit us at thrivecolivingcommunities.org. To receive advanced viewings of our podcast and other exclusive content, Find us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Thrive Co-Living Communities. You can also learn more ways to support our mission in the show notes below. Amazon Smile, GoFundMe, Kroger, and our own Thrive Gear store where you can buy t-shirts, hats, and many other items. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon.